Hey, we're going to do something we haven't done in over two years. I want everybody to stand up. And from across the room, make your way and shake somebody's hand. And if you don't want to because you're still concerned, you just stand there and wave. <laughs> Jake, Junior. That's my brother. Your brother? Yeah. Oh. For real. How you, buddy? Good, man. Good. Hey, y'all. Good. Good. <laughs> 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 hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. You watching me? That was weak. Did you feel that? I thought, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna anoint you with oil. I just got tree up by somebody. <laughs> I I was actually praying that would happen. <laughs> hey you buddy. Hey good morning. Good morning, good morning. Didn't that feel good? Give, uh, give the Lord a round of applause. This morning I'm going to talk about um, something I don't usually talk about. And we're going to talk about warfare. But I'm not talking about the war taking place in Ukraine. I'm talking about a war that every single Christian is battling. It's also the reason why... We have a problem seeking after that wisdom that I've talked about for the last, what, three weeks? I'm going to talk about that inner war, that inner battle that rages between our natures. If you're a Christian here today, if you're a believer, then there is a war that's raging in you and around you. When we become a Christian, God places His Holy Spirit in our hearts. And there is a sinful nature that all of us have. And when he becomes a Christian, when we become a Christian, that Holy Spirit enters our life. And when that happens, a war begins. Our sinful nature is always pushing us towards sin. And the Holy Spirit, that spiritual nature, is always pushing us toward a holy living. I titled today's message, Overcoming the war. Let's open with prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the laughter, the hugging, and the shaking of hands that was just took place. I thank you for this family. I thank you for this, your family. Lord, as always, we seek the guidance and the wisdom that only you can provide. Wisdom, Lord, that we can take from this place and put into action. So I pray for that this morning. Lord, I'm just a I'm just a vessel. Each person here, we're just vessels. Lord, I ask you to fill us up and then tip us over to a world that we come in contact with every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. This, um, the war that I'm going to talk about, the spiritual warfare, the warfare that takes place between or from our sinful nature and that spiritual nature takes place inside of us every single day. Day. Now, there are many different passages throughout the Bible that uh, talk about this, but there's one specific scripture that I want to use to point out what I'm getting at, and that comes from Galatians 5, 16 through 17. If you got your Bibles, turn to Galatians 5, 16 and 17. Galatians 5, 16 and 17. Everybody got it? Here's what it says. It 
So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict or battle with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. I'll stop there. Now, that's my sermon in a nutshell. Did it make sense? There's two sides, and they're always waging war on each other. Christians will always... You, as a Christian, will always struggle between what is right and what is wrong, no matter how long you've been a Christian. You could also say it's a struggle between the wise and the foolish. Talked about that last week, didn't we? Struggle of living for the flesh versus living that life that is led by the Holy Spirit. There's three truths that I want to point out today, and I hope this helps us understand how we gain victory in this inner war. The very first one, realize that you are engaged in daily warfare. Realize, understand, acknowledge that you, you as a Christian, are engaged in spiritual warfare every day of your life. You can't overcome it, you can't beat it, you can't fight it until you acknowledge that it is happening. You've got to realize that there's a war going on. And Christian life is a battleground, it ain't a playground. And too many Christians have gone AWOL. And I don't mean absent without leave, I mean absent without love. The whole topic of spiritual warfare is very broad. It is. We could spend, uh, I could create a sermon series and go probably for the next six months on spiritual warfare. I'm only going to scratch the surface of what this sermon this morning. But let me give you a comparison. In World War II, the Allied forces were fighting one enemy on three fronts. The African front, the European front, and the Pacific front. In much the same way, spiritual warfare involves fighting one enemy on three fronts. The world, the flesh, and the devil. That's what I want to talk about this morning. See, we battle the external enemy, the world, every single day. Whether you know it or not, as a Christian, you're going to battle the world every single day. 1 John 2.15 says, we're encouraged, do not love the world or anything in the world. Now, this isn't talking about the world of people. In fact, God so loved the world of people that He gave His only begotten Son to save the world. That world that I'm talking about represents the allure of humanity without God. 1 John 2.16 identifies that world as the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Jesus said we aren't to isolate ourselves from this world as much as I know myself would like to sometimes. That's not our goal as Christians. God sent us into the world to win over the world. But herein is a problem. The world's calling Christians to conform to be like everybody else. Our society is pushing the idea that if it feels good, then do it. It's okay. Or if you think it's all right... Well, then it is all right. If you don't think it's a sin, well, then it ain't a sin. It's what the world is preaching. It's what our society is preaching. The world's trying to change us. The world is trying to change Christians when we should be changing them. You remember when your mama used to say, or when you used to tell your mama, Mama, everybody else is doing it. And what's she tell you? You ain't everybody else. She probably went as far as to say, look, if everybody else was going to jump off a bridge, would you? Uh Uh-huh. 
Listen, this world that we're living in right now, the world without Christ is on an eight-lane highway heading straight to hell. And we don't need to be a part of them. We got to live with them. We should be influencing them. We should have a character and a testimony form, but we shouldn't be adhering to what they say is right. We shouldn't be modeling our lives after them. Christians, we don't, un, we don't imitate unbelievers. We don't imitate this world. We don't fall for their lies. We don't give in. It's wise to be set apart and foolish to follow along. We've been talking about 1 Peter on Wednesday nights. There in the first chapter of 1 Peter, he tells us, you as Christians, he's writing to Christians. And he says, you are set apart. You are a holy priesthood. He's talking to believers. You're a holy priest. We shouldn't be looking like or adhering to the culture of unbelievers. It's wise to be set apart and foolish to follow along. What did I tell you last week? If you smell like a skunk or if you hang around with a skunk long enough, you're going to smell like a skunk, right? The second thing we battle is this infernal enemy we call the devil. The word that I use there, infernal, means diabolical. It means wicked. And since the beginning of time, since Satan slithered on his belly in the Garden of Eden, he's been tempting people to rebel against God. But here's the thing. Satan is not equal with God. Satan is lesser than God. He isn't all-knowing. He's not all-powerful. He isn't omnipresent. Those are attributes that are only equal to God. That's, only, that's what God has, not the devil. Satan's a fallen angel with organized, a demonized army whose only job, whose only objective is to keep people away from God's will for their life. That's it. Satan's only job is to keep you away from God's will. That's it. That's all he wants to do. He wants to make sure that you're not following what God wants you to do. He wants us to adapt, to adhere to this world. Because when he does that, he checks the box and moves on to somebody else and just keeps doing this and doing this and doing this. His only objective is to interfere with a Christian's life. The third thing we battle in this eternal enemy, we call the flesh. This is the one I want to focus on the most today. Does, does anybody here remember the comedian Flip Wilson? About everybody over the age of 30, everybody under 38, 30 is going, Flip who? Do you remember, Flip Wilson had a, uh, a pretty uh, famous phrase. Do y'all remember what he used to say? He said, the devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. Let me tell you something. Truth is, devil can't make you do anything. Okay? He can only appeal to your sinful nature. As powerful as the devil is and as tempting as the world can be, those enemies have no power over you unless you give them permission. You've got to give them permission. I recently read an article about a jewelry shop robbery. The police investigation determined that the door hadn't been broken into. The display case, well, they're all intact. Upon further investigation, they discovered an employee of the jewelry store had given the crooks the code to the front door. Gave them the keys to the display case. Jared, if that serves me correctly, I think it's called an inside job, isn't it? See, the criminal in the inside let the other two criminals in. Sin is an inside job. 
When you sin, you can't blame the world. Don't blame the devil. It was your sinful nature that gave the keys to the world and to the devil. James 1, 13 through 14. I preached on this one about a month or more ago. It says, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire is dragged away and enticed. You see, once you learn to have victory over your sinful nature, that, that flesh, then you'll have the victory over the world and the devil. You hear that? Don't try to overcome the world. Don't try to overcome the devil without overcoming the flesh first. Over the past few years, I've had people come to me troubled over the fact that they say that they're a Christian and they're still struggling with sin. And they feel sure that they've lost their salvation. And I often say the very fact that they're struggling with the sin is a sign that they have or they are saved. I agree with that saying that says a Christian is not a person who experiences no bad desires. A Christian is a person who is at war with those desires. Conflict in your soul, it's not always bad. There's something much worse than the war inside you between the flesh and the spirit. You know what that war is? No war at all. It's better to be battling between the flesh and the spirit than to have no battle at all. If you're a Christian and there's no war raging, there's no war going on, then more than likely the flesh is the one that's now in control. If it feels like there's a war inside you, good. Good. The Holy Spirit is battling with that flesh back and forth. Praise God for that war. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is battling the flesh. Take heart if your soul feels like you're in a battlefield at times. Don't feel bad. Don't feel trouble when that battle inside is raging. Only feel bad when you don't have that battle raging. Think about that. Think about that. You should have. You should feel like there's a battle raging. The Holy Spirit and the flesh are battling back and forth. Once you realize the reason for that raging battle inside of you, you can have to make a very important decision. Once you acknowledge, once you understand, I said that very first, one of the first things, understand, acknowledge, know that there you are in a battle. And understand that because of that battle, that war that raging on in you, is because of the Holy Spirit, because of the flesh, battling back and forth. But once you understand that, once you realize where that's coming from, you've got to make a very important decision. Which brings us to the second truth. You have to choose. You have to make the choice which of your two natures controls you. See, when it comes to this inner war, I've got some good news. It's a winnable war. It is. Part of the freedom we have in Christ is the freedom to choose which nature controls you. Let me read you Romans 6, 12 through 14. You don't need to turn there. It says this, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desire. Do not, over, excuse me, do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to light. And offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master. Because you are not under the law, but you're under grace. And the truth is, this old sinful nature, it doesn't change. It can't be reformed. It can't be redeemed. God spoke those words to Cain after he ended up killing his brother. He said in Genesis 4, 7, Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Jeremiah understood the evil nature of the human heart when he wrote, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? 
you have to master your flesh. With God's help, you have to master your flesh. Before you can master the devil, before you can master this world, you have to master the flesh. Let me give you a perfect example, perfect illustration of two natures. A long time ago, a Native American was led to Christ by a traveling missionary. When the missionary returned after being away for months and months and months, he asked the new Christian, he said, how are you doing? The Native American described the inner battle between right and wrong. He said, it was as if there's two dogs that were fighting inside of me. A mean dog wanted me to do wrong. And a good dog wanted me to do right. The missionary asked the question, which dog wins the battle? The Native American thought for a moment and he said, with great wisdom, the one I feed the most. Think about that. You have a choice. You have a choice. You can starve your old sinful nature and feed the spiritual nature. Or you could feed your spiritual nature and starve the sinful nature. Think about it like this. You can make the choice to spend countless hours on social media or you can get into the Bible. You can make the choice to listen to gossip or even gossip yourself or you could spend it in prayer. You can make the choice to look at pornography or read God's Word. You can make the choice to talk like a godly man or a godly woman or you can go along with this world and sound like a sailor. You can make the choice to cheat on that exam or you can dig in and study. You can make the choice to spend your time aimlessly or spend it on things that glorify God. You can make the choice to watch things on TV or the internet or movies that are inappropriate. Or you can seek God's wisdom. You can seek God's guidance. You can make the choice to not talk behind people's back or instead create a relationship with that person and show them how good God is. You can make the choice to be wise or be foolish. You know what I'm getting at, right? Right? The reoccurring word here is choice. Every single thing that we do in this life will feed one of your two natures. Every single thing that you deal with, that you come in contact with, in your day-to-day -day work, play, whatever it is, will feed one of your two natures. Which one are you feeding? Which nature are you feeding? You can starve the flesh and feed the spirit, or you can feed the spirit and starve the flesh. We need to be aware of this and make the conscientious decisions to constantly, constantly be feeding our spiritual nature. I love the way that God illustrates spiritual truth throughout nature. We're coming into spring. You're getting ready to see the, the, some, some of the, the lilies have already started to bloom, started, started to pop open. Nature's going to change. And I love how God illustrates that. Illustrates the spiritual truth through nature. We've all heard of the cuckoo bird, right? Most of us, if we're old enough, have heard the commercial, I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. You remember that one? There's a European cuckoo bird, it's called the brood parasite. In other words, the mother bird, mother bird never makes a nest. She doesn't. She will never make a nest for her own. What she does is she sits back at a distance and she watches and she waits and she watches the other birds build nests and lay eggs. And when the mother flies away, she swoops in and sets in that nest. She lays her egg in that nest. The other bird returns. And she sees that there's a much larger egg in that nest. Right beside hers. Maybe her brain, her bird brain, wonders for a second, what's up with this? But her motherly instinct kicks in, takes over, and she sits on that egg as well. And she hatches it, just like it's one of her own. The only problem is that cuckoo chick is much larger than her own birds, her own baby birds. 
So when she returns with food to feed her babies, who gets fed? The larger bird. Eventually, the other baby birds die of starvation. And the ones that don't die of starvation, the bigger chick kicks them out of the nest. She's the only one left. And one of the strangest sights of nature can be seen when the smaller mother bird continues to feed the baby cuckoo, who is now several times larger than herself, who is unwillingly now adopted the big old bird in the nest. See, that cuckoo bird is a lot like our sinful nature. If you keep feeding it, if you keep feeding it and feeding it and feeding it, it'll take over. But you've got a choice. You can starve your flesh and feed your spirit. Starve the flesh and feed the spirit. The choice is yours. As I come to a close, when you surrender to the Holy Spirit, you can win the war. You can defeat sin. Sin is a battle of two wills. That's what it is. Your human nature wills you to sin. But the Holy Spirit will will you to live a holy life. We can overcome sin when we constantly pray, just as Jesus prayed, not my will be done, but your will be done. There's a little secret in the Bible many Christians have overlooked. Not only can God give you the power to overcome sin if you ask Him, He will also give you the will to overcome sin. You say, what are you talking about, Donnie? Philippians 2.13 says, For it is the God who works in you. didn't say with you. didn't say for you. It says, For it is God who works in you to will and act according to His good purpose. See, we've got the ability and the option to call on God's power. And God will overcome our flesh. And to that I call willpower. Galatians 5, 16, Paul says, Walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the power of the flesh. In Romans 8, 5, Paul said, Those who are living according to sinful nature have their minds set on that nature. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. There's that spiritual battle. There's two competing laws operating in your life. There's the two competing laws. The law of sin and the law of the Spirit. And it's up to you to make a choice. You hear people say all the time, what's wrong with this world today? What's, what's wrong with what's going on? How do we get in this spot? How, how do we get so corrupt? Well, here's the answer. People are making their decision to live according to their sinful nature. That's it in a nutshell. Versus living in accordance to what the Holy Spirit desires. Donnie, how did we get in this situation? How did this world become so corrupt? Well, people are making the decision to live according to their sinful nature versus living in accordance to what the Holy Spirit desires for them. You've got to make a decision every single day of your life. Which nature are you going to feed? The flesh, that sinful nature, or the Holy Spirit? Walking in the Spirit, it's a growing experience. Who I was yesterday is not who I am today. Who I was a year ago is not who I am today. And that's good. You should be growing. It's called sanctification. We should be getting better at it the longer we're doing it. We should be getting better at it the longer we're a Christian. But the secret of the victory, the secret of that war, the secret of overcoming that flesh is to be led daily by the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the gift of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the battle that rages in me at times, Lord. I know you're at work when that battle's raging. 
Each person here says, you know what, that battle sometimes is just too much to bear. I can't do it. don't understand it. I don't want it. I just want peace. Well, if that's you, let me tell you, be glad that that battle is raging. And if there's no battle raging, seek more of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you so much for your words of wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. As we close, we have a song to close with. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm not going to ask you to stand. I'm not going to ask you to sing. I just want to ask you to bow your heads right where you're at. Eyes closed and head bowed. And just listen to the song. And as the song plays, you pray. Think about it. Which nature am I going to feed? I mean, you're, you've got to make a conscientious decision on a daily basis. Who am I going to feed? Am I going to feed my spiritual nature? Or am I going to feed the... It's flesh. Head bowed, eyes closed, and just pray as you listen to the words. Nothing else matters. That's what the song was saying. Nothing else matters. Every single thing in this life, everything that you do in this life, every day at work or play, whatever it is, will impact the flesh, sinful nature, or your spiritual nature. We have to wake up every single morning saying, which nature am I going to feed today? Everything from the music we listen to, the words we speak, the thoughts we think. It's all about spiritual warfare and picking which one, making the choice and understand that I want the Holy Spirit to win over in everything I do. Jared Hall, would you mind to close us in prayer?